Welcome back to Fixing Furniture. I've got a Hoosier cabinet here that needs a lot of TLC. There's broken hardware on it, some of the doors are coming apart, and this roll-up tambour door has just fallen apart. Now there's a lot of confusion on the internet about how to repair a tambour door. So I'm going to show you the right techniques and the right material to use so you can be successful at repairing a tambour door. Stick with me, I'll show you how it's done. As a furniture repair business, we're opening the doors to our workshop to show you the tools and techniques to repair furniture. The front rail here, you can see this has been broken off. We give you tips to make your repair projects easier. Let's get into the workshop and start fixing furniture. If you've never heard of a Hoosier cabinet before, this is something that was popular in the US and Canada in the early 20th century. Because there weren't built-in kitchen cabinets, this was essentially the workshop or the work area for someone to be working in the kitchen. For example, here is a tip-out bin. This would be used for storing flour, so the flour would be added to the top here. And then if I open the bottom part here, you can see where the flour would come out. You take off the bottom here, you turn the handle, and that would sift the flour into a bowl. These cabinets were invented in Indiana, and Indiana is known as the Hoosier State. That's why these are called Hoosier cabinets. There was a lot of innovation that went on through the about 50 years that these were popular. Um, spice holders, various gadgets. Uh, if you grew up around one of these and you have a favorite gadget, put them in the comments. I'd love to hear about that. And also, these were popular in Canada and the US, but I'm not sure that these actually made it anywhere beyond those borders. So if you're in a different country and you have seen a Hoosier cabinet in your country, I'd love to hear about it and where you're from. So let's get to repairing the tambour here. There's a few issues that are going on. The most obvious one is the backing here has come off and this is just duct tape. It looks like someone stapled it on, so that's falling apart. And then down here, the cabinet has pushed out on this side and therefore this is coming out of the track. So I need to, first of all, carefully disassemble this take all these tambour pieces out. Now when you're disassembling and reassembling a tambour door, there may be an access panel at the back of the cabinet. There could be stoppers there, remove the stoppers and the whole thing would come out the back. Now when I did a roll top desk repair, you can see I lifted up the gallery off of the desktop and that allowed the tambour to roll out of the case and that way I could put it back in again. In this particular cabinet, I don't have the ability to access the panel at the back. So the only way I can get it back in is with this cabinet still apart here. So I'll prepare the side here to, to glue it back together again, but I can't do that until I've got the tambour back in place. I'll show you what it looks like coiled up over here. This is the track here where the tambour goes up and around and then loops back in. So this is where it's stored when it's in the open position. I'll move the cabinet off the bench and then we can inspect the door. So I'll lay this out on some padding here and get all the pieces in place. So the tambour on this particular one has a profile here. It looks like a shiplap. One overlap at the bottom and a recess at the top for the next piece. So the reason you want to lay these out is just to see what the color looks like because there might be a slight color variation. So I want to get them in the right order first. The lighter ones are likely at the bottom, the top where they haven't seen much daylight. It looks like the darker ones are near the bottom. So I would say a different light variation across them. Oh, there we go. That looks better. So I would say this is probably it. Like that. So I'll line these up. It's just close counts at this point. But what I want to do is flip this over. And to do that, I'm going to put tape on it. Now, when I put these ones in here, you see there's some warp that's gone on here. So I don't think I can take that warp out just by gluing this together. So we'll see how that comes together. But I'll need to clamp that down a little bit. So I'm just putting light tack tape on here. I don't want a strong tack on this finished surface. I don't want to potentially damage the surface of the wood. But this will just allow me to flip this over and keep all the pieces together.
I just need to take this pull off so that this can lay flat. And then I can flip it over. Okay, so let's flip it over and see what's happening on the back side. Yep, duct tape and staples. This is a good example of what not to do. This is duct tape and it's just got staples in it. What was originally done was there's a piece of fabric here, here, and here attached to the top. Now, I'm not a fan of using strips of fabric for doing tambours. I prefer to have a full piece of fabric here. That's what's going to give us the best operating door. And that's the process I'm gonna use. So I need to take off all this duct tape and the staples and this old fabric as well. Now these blocks here were used to hold on these strips, but they might also be used to prevent the tambour, so this is the bottom, from getting pulled into the top. So I'm going to label these here and then take them off because I'm going to replace them once I put the fabric on. I'm not going to use a scraper to scrape all the old glue off. Now, there does seem to be a bit of fabric there. There's some texture. Let's see what's going on up here. Okay, so that's cleaning off well. That will clean off well. But you see I'm getting a little bit of fabric here. So I'll clean up as much as I can and then what I can do is take some vinegar. Let's see if that will work off the rest of the glue here. We'll let that sit for a second and then come back to it. So I'll just keep working across here and I'll get all that fabric off. Now the reason I'm taking this back to bare wood is because I need the glue to stick to the bare wood, not the fabric. And I'm using white vinegar and the white vinegar is reversing the high glue that's on here. I can actually feel it and it's sticky. High glue is a unique glue because it can be reversed. It's the only one that can. And that's why when you're working on restoration work, it's important to use high glue. So well, I'll be coating this with high glue to put the fabric back on, but I have seen some products out there that are white glue for tambours and I wouldn't recommend doing that. It might work for your initial glue up, but when you come back to repair it at some point in the future, it could be 50 years down the road, it's gonna be extremely difficult to repair the tambours and be able to adhere another piece of fabric to it. So high glue is the right glue for this, that way it can be repaired in the future. So I've cleaned off this section here, just needs to dry. And over here, I want to show you some of this fabric that's come apart. You can see there's strings here. And if I pull on that string, it's just pulling straight parallel with 
the joints. So what's happened here is the fabric has broken on each of these joints and that's because of the type of fabric that was used. So when I go to put the fabric on, I'll show you the type of fabric you can use that won't do this, that won't break across the tambours. An upholster attachment for vacuum is really useful here because it allows me to brush off the surface at the same time I'm cleaning up the mess. I'll leave a link to this in the video description. Now I need to get this all clamped up before I apply the glue. So I'm going to use a bench hook which I use for planing. It's just going to make this a little bit easier. So this is just a board that's got a 90 degree board at the front, a small lip at the back. I'll put it on the bench here and get everything set up. So this setup will work well for me, with the exception of this piece at the end here. This is thicker than the rest of the tambour because this is where the handle is. So we'll leave that off, we'll attach that later. So what I want to do is line up all these pieces so that they're straight on an edge like this. So I'll grab a couple small pieces of wood, my framing square, and get that lined up so this is nice and square. It's really important that this is square because if it isn't, it's not going to travel well in the channels. So I've got a piece I'm going to run here, another piece here, so I'll just set that aside for now. Get the framing square set up here, do it this way. And this is what I want to use as my reference. So if this is a 90 degree angle, this will be 90 degrees when I clamp it all up. So I just need to screw this to the edge here and we'll be good to go. I'm almost set here, but what I want to do is clean off each of the tambours first. It's much easier to clean them off like this rather than after they're all glued together. So once they're cleaned up, I can just line them up against here and then I can clamp them up. Now the best cleaner for cleaning off finished wood is just soap and water. It's the mildest cleaner that you can have. So just wring out the cloth and Likely all I'm doing is just cleaning off dust, but actually on this particular one there are a few crunchy things on the edge there. That'll just help make sure that these are going together well and they're going to look great once I've got them together. I'll just dry them off as soon as I'm done here and then they're all ready to go. I'll line them up. And then we can talk about glue and fabric. I'm all done cleaning it off and here's the drying rag I used. You can see there's a fair bit of dirt there and look at all the filth that was on here. So they didn't look that dirty but I always recommend cleaning things off because you never know what you're going to pick up. This project will be that much better because it's clean. I can now line up all of these tambour strips to the edge here. Now I've got it square and what I need to do is put some pressure on this so that these are all nice and tight. Now in the center it's going to work well. On the edges here you can see this is a little bit warped so I'll need some different pressure there. And to do that I've got a straight edge here so I'm going to measure and install this parallel so that I can put some wedges in here get this tight and then we'll be good to glue the fabric on.
I'll get some wedges out and I'll put this last piece in here. Oops. <laughs> well, this is gonna be fun. I need something over here to hold this flat. So I've got a thin piece of maple here and I've got an old furniture part here. I believe this was a center drawer glide. So I'll secure this to the pine board and I should be able to wedge that together. So that's nice and snug. Let's see if I can put this together now. Okay, so I can slide this under here. Get it squeezed in. Now here, I wanna wedge it under this as well. Okay, so that's not gonna pop out anymore. That's good. Now, if I take a pair of wedges, I'm gonna thin one here, and put them together like this, as I push them together, they become wider. So I'll put two wedges in the center here, squeeze them together, and that gives me a nice snug clamping so that these are as tight as possible. I'll do the same thing on the end here and see if I can take this warp out. Yep, that's looking good. So I'm just gonna put this block on here and I'm gonna let this sit overnight. Hopefully that'll take some of the stress out of this wood. Uh, these wedges are really helping clamp it in. Now, if you don't have wedges, uh, we sell these on our website, wouldn'titbenice.ca. These are chairback wedges for holding in chair backs that are anchored to a seat. So we sell those in packs of 12. You can find them there. Well, I've left this sit overnight and we'll take the block off and check this out in a minute, but I wanna talk about fabric first. So the backing of this is fabric. And as you saw before, there were strips. I'm not a fan of that because it's not giving structure and support to the whole piece. So I'm gonna put putting on linen. Now there are two different types of weaves for linen. One is a plain weave and the other is what's called a twill. So the difference between the two is a plain weave is woven like this, which means if you cut it, you can tear it. When you've got a twill, it's actually got a, an angled design on it. You can see it on the surface. I'll show you in a minute. But if you were to cut it and try to pull it, it won't tear. So that's what I'm looking for here. I don't want this tearing on the slats like we saw it previously. I want to use twill. So that gives me really the structural support that I'm looking for long term on this piece. Let's take a close look here at what was originally on the tambour. So you can see the fibers here in a crisscross pattern. And this is a thread. If I pull on that thread, you can see how easily that pulls. So this is a plain weave. Over here, I'll get a really close up look and you can see the pattern of the fabric there. So it's more of a crisscross pattern. And over here on the twill, you see those angled lines? That's gonna give us the structure that I'm looking for here so this doesn't break. So let me demonstrate the plain weave here. I'll just take my scissors, cut a little bit here, cut a little bit here, and you can see I can tear this fabric. So that's plain weave. This is what you don't wanna use. What I'll do is lay out the size of the piece I need here with the twill. I'll snip it as well and see how it doesn't tear when you put some pressure on it. So I want a piece that's oversized. So if I cut it about here, I still have that last section I have to go on here. But I'll just cut a larger section. So I'll put a cut here. And now with that cut, 
I'll try to tear it and see it won't tear. I've now got my twill cut and what I need to do is mask off the edges here so I don't get glue or fabric in those areas where it's traveling in the channels. But before I do that, let's pull up these wedges and see if this is any less warped than it was yesterday. It's tight there. There's still tension there. Okay, well, hopefully that fabric will hold it together. I'll put these wedges back in and I'll get everything masked and lined up properly. I'm also masking off my bench hook here, so when I put the glue on, I'm not going to make a mess of it. Now, gluing technique is really important here. I'm going to be using a roller to spread the glue, but if I were to take the hide glue and go like this and put it on here, it's going to seep into the cracks because of the amount of glue I'm putting on it. So, the glue goes on the tin foil here. I use this to roll out, and what I'm doing is applying an even coat across the wood. That way, I don't have a bulk of glue that might be seeping into the cracks. So I want to spread it evenly and what you'll notice is the wood tone changes in color as I apply more glue. So it's just a matter of getting a nice even coat across the whole surface here and then applying the fabric. Okay, I've got glue across the whole surface, and now I can lay the fabric down. So, as you can see, I've got lots of excess here. I don't want to be worried about where the edge should be, where it doesn't cover an area. It's just a matter of spreading it out, and you want to get all the wrinkles out. So, working from the center, pushing the fabric to the sides. Now, it's really important that before you use fabric like this, that you wash it. Wash it a couple times in hot water and dry it, and that way it shrinks. You don't want this stretching when it's in use. So you can now start to see the pattern of the wood showing through. So I'm going to use the roller to 
help push on the, the fabric. And as I work it in, you can actually see the texture. And if I work it in with my fingers, you can actually see the glue working its way through. So that's why I'm not concerned about using the roller that's got glue on it on the fabric. But you can see the pattern developing of the wood. Just goes to show I've got good contact. And I'm using a fair bit of force to do this. I want to make sure I've got all of that fabric in good contact. You can see down here where I had a little bit more glue. It's uh, really going to adhere well. Now I've got my putty knife here. I'm just going to push it in in the corners here where my roller can't necessarily get enough pressure. And then what we'll do is put some protective material on it and then clamp it. So this is parchment paper. Because the glue can come through the fabric, and I'm going to put a board on here. I don't want the board adhering to the fabric. You can use wax paper as well. So here's my board. Just make sure it's in the center. And then apply some weight. I had to film that very rapidly because I've only got about five minutes of working time with the glue before I have to get it clamped up. So apply the glue, get the fabric on, get the clamping on. Make sure you figure out your clamping before you get any glue out. Now, if you're a user of Instagram, we're also on Instagram, and I can't film every project that comes to the shop here, but I do share tips on Instagram. I'll leave you a link here so you can get to our Instagram profile. I'll leave this for 24 hours. I wouldn't clamp it for any less than that. 24 hours to allow that glue to come to full strength. We'll take it out of this form and see how it looks. So what I need to do now is cut off the material on three sides here. This is where the handle goes on the bottom, so I still need that overhang. So let's peel this back and take a look. So if I pull on this, you'll see that it's sticking to the tape. But if we pull the tape back, this is where we've got the bare wood, and that's exactly what we're looking for. So I'll use a sharp knife and cut the fabric along here.
Now every time I do this, I find this is the exciting part and to see how it turns out. So I'll pull the wedges out here. And they're covered in tape. And that one. Stuck a little bit down here, that tape is. Okay. And there we go. Rolling tambour. Okay, so it's nice and flexible. It's sturdy. Those pieces at the top. You can see there it's crept a little bit here, but I can't really control that because of the tension that's in the board. So look at the edge here, you can see there's a bit of a gap there at the top, but we've got a nice tight tambour all the way across here because it was clamped together. And there's a bit of misalignment here, but that gets fixed once it goes in the channel. You can see here that'll ride in the channel properly. So last part is to add the bottom here. This is where the handle goes on. So I'll glue that up next. Now, if you remember this handle part here is too high and that's why I took it off so I could glue the tambour properly. But for me to glue this on now, what I need to do is flip this over and glue it the opposite way. So this is going to go this way. This needs to go this way. So I'll glue it on like this. Now I want to be able to clamp this. So what I'm going to do is take this edge off that I had here before, and then I can clamp it to the board. So I'll start by laying the parchment down here just so nothing sticks. And then what I'll do is line up the tambour against this fence over here. Straighten up the fabric. And now I can glue this on here, line everything up against that fence and clamp this down. So that's going to work well. I just need to apply the glue. And I want to mask off these ends again so I don't get any glue on them. So I'll just take a piece of masking tape and when you tear it off you get these rough edges. I want a straight edge here because it's going to be uh, put up against the wood there. So a trick for you. If you take a putty knife, bend the tape over the putty knife, you can then break it and you get a straight line. So I'm just going in about an inch, put that tape on and we're good there. And that will prevent it from sticking. I also want to set the fabric back from this front edge. So I'm just going to take the masking tape and give myself about a half an inch where there won't be any fabric glued to the bottom. Before I put the tape on here, you can just see that glossy mark there. So that's where this has been running inside the runner. But I'm just going in about an inch from that edge to keep the fabric away. Now, if you wondered how much glue it took to do this, this was almost full when I started. So that's how much glue went on the back here. On this side, it's not going to take very much. My glue brush is a little bit small for this application, but it's just a small part. So get it spread on here and then we can glue it up. Okay, so to get the tightest joint possible here, I'm just going to pull the tambour to the front. There's no resistance at the back. I can now get it as snugly fit as I can. Line it up with my fence at the side. And then pull it here. So I'll just pull the fabric tight and then clamp it on. I'll start the clamping in the center here. So again, just pull that fabric out once more. Make sure it's nice and tight. And then I'll put my clamp on. Okay. 
I can now move this off the workbench and we'll look at the cabinet and see what needs to be done there. In order to inspect this, I need to turn it on its side and before I do that, I need to take the flower bin out. This just rests in two spots here. It's quite a neat setup. And this is also uh, not really functional as a piece of furniture for the owner. So in part two, I'm gonna show you how I put some shelves in here and how I take this off in a way that it can be reassembled if they wanted to do that. But being able to put shelves in here for cookbooks is really gonna help them out in their cabinet. Now the other part of the repair you'll see in part two is how I repair these doors that are coming apart. And this hardware here has a broken latch. I purchased some new hardware here, but you can see it's brass. I need to age that to look like this so we can get this back in working order. So I'll close up the latches here and get this cabinet turned on its side. So from this angle, it looks like it might come together well. There's a nail over here. This nail here is pulled out and that's because it was nailed so close to the edge of the board. So I'll need to pull that out and reinstall it and I need to clean something out a little bit here. It's not quite closing tight. So that's now coming down more and you can see this Ardox nail. This is a modern attachment. So a modification someone had done. There's also some debris in here. So I'll just knock that out and then we can prepare these runners for the timbre. Now to prepare the timbre for going in here, I wanna wax these channels. If you keep these waxed, that'll help prevent any damage because they don't have friction going through here. I'm gonna use a tea light here that's burnt down. That'll give me a thin piece of wax that'll easily get in this channel. So just open this up. Oh, this is a little more brittle than I bought bargained for. So you don't need anything fancy here. What I recommend is not using beeswax. Beeswax is actually sticky, so it's not the right product here. But what I'm doing is I'm putting wax on the inside edge here, I'm putting wax on this face here. I'll go all the way around, and then we'll be ready to put the tambour in. Be sure to go to our website and subscribe to our newsletter for links to new videos, workshop tips, and more. Now back to fixing furniture. So this section of the tambour is now dried for 24 hours. All I need to do is trim up the fabric and then we can test it in the cabinet. The last step I was going to go through is re-adding these blocks here, but I've realized there's nothing under cabinet here that these are acting as stop blocks. So they were really just there to help with those uh, strips of fabric that were there. So we're all ready for the test now. Let's get this in. Even though this cabinet is separated a little bit, it's tight up here. So if I try to get this into the channel, I really don't have the ability to get this in here. So what that means is I need to disconnect the back spread this out more to give me the ability to put this in here. And this is why some cabinets have accessibility sections at the back where the tambour will roll out and that way it's serviceable. I now need a way to open up this cabinet this way. So I'll put a block in here and get a spreader clamp set up. So this will allow me to jack open the cabinet. There. That should give me what I need. Okay, so get it started in this side. apply some glue to this rabbit here and then I'll spread it with the brush and then what I can do is clamp this cabinet back together again. 
For clamping a large cabinet like this, I've got four foot clamps. That allows me to get the full length of this. But it's not very common for people to have clamps like this. So let me show you how to do this with two smaller clamps. So I pull out a three foot clamp and you can see how far that comes here. It's not quite cutting it. So if I leave this clamp here and grab another clamp, what I can do now is nest them together and pull the cabinet tight. So with it all clamped up, let's check out the tambour door. Wow. Nice and smooth. With the problems on this tambour door solved, you can say the case is closed, but this Hoosier cabinet still needs some TLC. I've got some doors to fix, broken hardware to replace, and I'm putting in some shelves. So I hope you'll join me next time for part two of this video. We've got over 80 videos in our collection at this point, so I'll leave one right here for you to continue to enjoy. Thanks for watching Fixing Furniture.